Hi, welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from Powersonic and Apprentice One to One. And today's video is a little bit different. I know this isn't going to appeal to some of you, and I do apologise. Um, it's not going to be a regular thing. It's just something that I wanted to share due to my efforts of raising awareness around mental health and suicide in the UK. Um, some of you might know, but I've been out running every day through the course of August. I'm trying to run a minimum of 5,691 metres every day, 7,000 if I can. And that's because in the UK and Ireland every, well in 2019 as the last recorded figures that are available show 7,000 people lost their lives to suicide. And um, just to raise a bit of awareness and start the discussion around mental health if possible, I mean it is still a big problem within construction, people don't like to talk about it. Um, it's surprising quite how many people have had issues uh, with their mental health in the past and I am mindful of myself when I was a younger person and been quite ignorant to all this to be totally truthful. Um, in my early 20s it wasn't something that even entered my mind as ever been a, a possibility of something that I might suffer from myself. Um, it wasn't something that I had any real knowledge of at all. Um, my first experience of it, and I spoke about this on the Mental Health Awareness Week earlier on in, in the year, uh, was when I was away working. So I got sent off to work uh, for the United States Air Force abroad for a number of weeks, away from my family, and it was quite high pressure, high stress, leading a team of people trying to get a, um, an install done in what was quite challenging circumstances. And um, yeah, I had an issue with my mental health at that time. I was early 20s, as I say. This was at a time before we had access to the internet or um, any kind of place you could go and get a resource at the, the click of a button. And the first thing I noticed was the difficulty sleeping. So I was kind of away in a hotel and I, I started having to have problems falling asleep on an evening, then waking up very early in the morning, sort of four, five o'clock in the morning. And I just assumed you know, it was a strange hotel to be staying in and you're away from home, you're bound to not sleep quite as well as normal and didn't really join any of those dots to start with. And then kind of a few days later, I was down having breakfast one day and all of a sudden I had like a sense of impending doom kind of fall over me. It was really strange and I'd never experienced anything like that before. My heart started to race, my breathing felt all funny. Um, you know, I'd actually convinced myself that I was about to, to die in that moment. It was that that off-putting and unsettling um, and obviously now with the knowledge I've got looking back it was it was clearly a panic attack brought on through anxiety and um, tiredness and fatigue um, but at that point in time like I say with no knowledge of anything like that no real support network or anything with me to give any kind of insight or guidance as to what might be happening I was left to my own ignorant self uh, sort of to try and figure out what was going on and um, fortunately there was a, uh, a one computer in the hotel, the internet computer to the older people watching this video you'll all remember those times when if you wanted to access the internet you had to go off to a special room with a computer in it and pay for the privilege of using it and um, yeah I was putting the symptoms in, I was convinced I had an issue with my heart, um, there was some kind of physical thing wrong with me making me feel like that and obviously that's kind of a vicious cycle in your own mind then because you convince yourself you've got something wrong with you and the symptoms of anxiety and stress just increase. So this is the purpose of this video really, just in case there is anybody out there who is feeling strange in themselves and don't really want to associate it with their mental well-being, that it definitely can be um, a, cause of, a cause of physical symptoms. That's certainly what I found. And then that little bit of research I managed to do online to get access to a support telephone number uh, with the healthcare providers in the company that I worked for and the support of my family back home to sort of figure out what was happening to me. And um, when I had the peace of mind myself that, you know, it wasn't something that was physically wrong with my body, that it was actually um, an illness of my mind because I'd caused a lot of stress for myself, uh, overworking, long hours, lack of sleep, um, missing family, and just, just pressure, I guess. Um, yeah, as a young person, it's difficult to deal with, and if you don't know where to go and look for that uh, support, it, it was a really hard time for myself. And then, kind of, it didn't get any better while I was there, to be totally truthful. I still struggled quite badly for the rest of that trip. And when I got back, that's when things started to hit me in different ways. So that no longer had the, the pressure and issue of being away from family, but I was 
feeling very fatigued. I think everything started to catch up with me of what had actually happened um, out there. And I sought the support of my GP and um, was referred to the mental health services team. And fortunately, with um, some treatment and counselling, I recovered. I managed to get myself back on an even keel. My sleep was restored. I no longer felt anxious and I could go back to my normal regular life. But if I hadn't have sought that that support and had those discussions, it might not have turned out like that. And I sometimes wish that there was somebody there who could have told me, you know, this is what's this has happened to me before. You know, it's perfectly natural and normal to have these kind of things happen to yourself if you are in those kind of situations. And sometimes it's it's not even triggered by anything to do with uh, stress or pressure. It can just be a circumstance of the environment around you or your upbringing or your physical health can affect your mental well-being as well. There's so many different things. So I'm not going to start trying to act like I'm a doctor and tell you how you can make yourselves better because... You know, I can't, but I am aware that there's a lot of people within the Apprentice One to One community who have come forward saying they're really struggling right now, have been for some time. And um, yeah, it's it's hard when you see so many young people who are having difficulties. And I just wanted to put that out there that I've experienced it when I was a younger person and I'm now absolutely fine. Um, I can manage my mental health very well with that experience and knowledge that I've built up over the years. And that's helped me no end actually with um, recent events in Apprentice One to One and I'll discuss those in a minute because that was actually a point where I had another flare up with my mental health um, for a different reason and yeah I'll speak about that in a minute but if you are having strange feelings in your body or uh, the way you're thinking if it's not normal or you, um, your usual character please speak to your family and friends speak to the professional medical experts get that support from the right places and if you were really really suffering the Samaritans are there 24 7 and the phone number is 116 123 but I'll pick back up with this in a sec. Okay so picking back up now um, I mentioned about my experience when I was a younger person and the difficulty I had with getting on top of my mental health at that stage in my life. Uh, more recently with Apprentice One to One obviously that kind of blew up into something much bigger than I was ever expecting. I wasn't really prepared for it to go that way I was already quite a busy person with my business and family life. Obviously due to the circumstances of COVID, that wasn't quite such an issue with business because that was virtually stopped. Um, so I did have the time there and actually the enjoyment, it was something that I was enjoying doing every day and um, was a positive impact actually on my life at that time. But yeah, it, it kind of, did lead to extra pressure on me. I felt quite responsible of finding people, work, getting back to people in a timely manner. It is um, it is difficult when you go from having next to no followers um, on the main platforms of social media such as Instagram and YouTube to several thousand and the questions and messages that come in off the back of that. But to be fair, um, that didn't really trouble my mental health as, as such. It's what I found most difficult was there was other groups of people um, in the social media space, if you like, who I'd been a big supporter of for quite a, a number of years, given lots of encouragement towards and um, shared their success as often as I could. And it was very apparent from the beginning of Apprentice One to One how not only was that not reciprocated, but there was some um, strange things going on that did kind of rock me, I've got to be honest. Um, you know, there was all of a sudden accusations posted on my content, and I've mentioned this before, that I was attacking and undermining and what I was actually offering with as little value. And this was, this was on my posts. And I think the issue was that, that those individuals were reading content I was posting, you know, my opinions on what I saw in the industry and reading them as about them. You know, I was trying to think about this from their point of view, mindful of their own mental health, if you like, and, you know, to see if I was off in the things that I was raising issue with. Um, but I saw it in a way as an attempt to moderate me and what I was doing. It did start to make me second guess myself. Um, and then the, it, got, it got to a different stage where there was blocking and unblocking almost on a daily basis of my accounts. Um, yeah, 
unkind comments made about things I'd said. It was just very, very weird and it got me sec sec doubting myself, you know, and then it led to, to DMs from other individuals where I was having messages sent across that they'd seen my posts and perhaps I should think about doing these generic posts that I do where I don't mention individuals. I'm a big advocate of that. If I've got an issue with something within the industry, I won't ever name something or somebody. I will just raise point with the issue at hand, if you like, and then we can debate around that subject because it's very, very rarely ever about an individual um, when I post something. It just isn't. And yeah, to have those kind of comments dropped on me that, you know, you're inviting this kind of abuse onto yourself by posting in the way that you are, I think you should stop doing it. And um, even to the point that I don't see uh, dishonesty and deviousness in your eyes when I watch your videos. You know, you get this is somebody who said they were offering that opinion as a way to help me, as feedback. Feedback I hadn't asked for, by the way. Um, but yeah, it all created that element of doubt in my mind about what I was doing and if it was something of my character that was wrong, maybe I wasn't suited for social media and I should just listen to all of this advice from a select group of people and wrap it up. And I had those kind of thoughts for a couple of weeks. Um, you know, I would say the back end of 2020 now, I had those discussions with my circle of friends within the industry about just ending Apprentice one-to-one -one and stopping what I was doing. Um, because I didn't need that kind of aggravation in my life. And then I realised that was me thinking quite selfishly about that, that what Apprentice One to One had become was something that was helpful to people. And for me to get distracted on a personal level with some of the things and opinions other people had um, wasn't in the best interests of others. And I was also mindful of the mental health of the people that were making those kind of comments towards me. Um, and how, you know, they might not be in the best place themselves, and it's just their reality. That was that was something that somebody had posted that resonated with me. So this is a, a version of me that these people have created in their own minds that isn't actually a, a reflection of myself. And they're basing their comments and opinions on their reality uh, because it's not really, it doesn't matter, just to ignore it. And that's kind of the approach I went for. But yeah, it did knock, knock me a bit, and I think if I'd been a younger person, this is going back to, to social media and um, the aspects of bullying that we hear about on social media these days, that's often something that's suggested. And ironically, one of the proponents of um, bullying on social media and be kind was one of those individuals who was constantly blocking and unblocking me. That wasn't lost, lost on me. Um, but I digress. Yeah, so just to try and throw that into the discussion as well, really, that if you are having difficulties on social media, to recognise that it's not actually the real world and what someone's opinion of you is based on stuff you've shared on the internet. You know, don't hold on to it with too much value. Um, move on and keep your mind clear and fresh for what really matters. Um, look after yourself and if you are struggling with, with your thoughts and emotions, speak to those around you, let other people know and uh, get that expert support and help. And again, I will apologise to everybody who's watched this video who isn't really here for the mental health content. It is just part of a challenge I'm doing through the course of August, trying to raise some awareness and some discussion around um, mental health and suicide and just some of my own experiences of it really that's all I've got I'm not an expert far from it and uh, yeah that was the purpose of this one thank you to everyone who has stuck with it and watched we'll be back to the regular electrical content from the next video we have the lovely DeWalt chasing gun in action I know that's something that's been quite popular so we're going to do some more footage of that um, with a proper extractor on it and show you some of the damage it can do but otherwise, keep well, stay safe, and if you ever need the Samaritans, they're always there 24-7 on telephone 116 123. And if you haven't already, pop over to the Just Giving page Amy's set up. 
and if you can make a donation and uh, all money raised to go into the Samaritans. Have a great day.